Hi, my name is Marianne Monson, and I am the author of the novel Her Quiet Revolution. It's a historical fiction novel based on the life of Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon. And Dr. Cannon was not only a frontier doctor who graduated from the University of Michigan and the University of uh, Pennsylvania Medical School, but she also became the first female state senator. She really dedicated her political career to issues of public health, to promoting vaccinations, and to stopping epidemics and outbreaks. In this passage that I'm reading today with permission from Shadow Mountain Publishing, uh, Martha is in medical school in Philadelphia and she is doing some experiments to um, basically establish for herself the truth of germ theory, which was, was essentially just coming out um, at this point and was a bit controversial because it went against a lot of the long established science. There was a, a, a Dr. Ignis Semmelweis who had been in charge of a maternity ward and he noticed that when he had his providers wash their hands with an antiseptic solution that the rates of mortality and childbed fever among the, the mothers went down dramatically. But the established medical community could find no scientific backing for the research that he provided and the numbers that he provided. And so they mocked him, they discredited him, and essentially they institutionalized him and he, and he died in that institution. So um, it's a really sad uh, chapter in medical history. But at this point in the novel, Maddie is aware of Semmelweis's work and she's, um, re she's uh, performing some of the experiments that will uh, validate it, his work. So, um, and in this passage, she has put the colonies, uh, bacteria colonies in the window sun and uh, within glass petri dishes and she's going back to see the results. <clears throat> So after washing her hands, she covered each dish with a glass bell dome, then set them beside a window where the morning sun would warm the bacteria colonies, spurring them to new and burgeoning life. Three days later, Maddie's light step sounded down the hall, hurrying as if it were Christmas morning, though the presents this morning would arrive wrapped in bells of glass. She uncovered the lids, marveling at the transparent agar agar, still solid on this unseasonably warm spring morning, the untreated sample now growing a lovely colony of clustering pus. The inoculated dish washed first with soap contained fewer bacteria colonies than the original, but the final one, oh, the final one, washed with Semmelweis's concoction, was pure and clean as her mother's kitchen table. Ignaz Madi said aloud, speaking to potentially non-existent ether, I wish you could see this moment and understand what you accomplished. Somehow I hope you know you were right. The Galileo of microbiology you were, my friend, sacrificed for your vision decades ahead of your time. And you, Frau Hess, she tilted the agar agar to shimmer in the morning sun rays, though it remained beautifully solid. Your work demonstrates once more the impossibly fine line between a woman's work and the quests of humanity. Critics had once told Dr. Semmelweis that cadaverous particles were too unreasonably small to cause harm. Lounging together in their superiority, the medical community had been certain nothing so tiny could possibly be responsible for diseases so grandiose and devastating. Many had been offended at the implication that, as gentlemen of medicine, their hands might be anything other than clean. Looking around the room for somewhere to direct her scorn, she found it in a row of scientific textbooks lined up on a dusty shelf. You have quite the habit of underestimating small things you do not understand, Maddie informed them. Hands trembling with emotion, she turned back to her samples. If something as seemingly insignificant as sanitizing hands and instruments meant the difference between thousands of women returning home with their babies and thousands more who would be moved from maternity ward to graveyard, wouldn't this knowledge mean for her mother and so many other women struggling to survive in the West? Mothers needed to know how to protect their children, not just from runaway horses and desert snakes, but from strings of microscopic clusters unwittingly passed by loving hands. Here, she thought, was work worth giving one's life to. 
that people might know their own power. Of course, germ theory is now uh, highly established and proven within the medical world. We now know how diseases spread, and during this COVID epidemic, it's incredible to see the scientific efforts to attack and learn to understand it. Um, but it's, it's remarkable to see that the struggles that um, early pioneers had against long histories of established medicine and procedures, ways of doing things, it helps to uh, put into context the struggles and the current issues of today. Martha Hughes Cannon went on to dedicate her life as a public servant to issues of public health. She established the Utah State Board of Health and she served on it. She worked on issues of trying to get access to clean water to, um, to all communities regardless of their income levels. And she would put uh, measures into place that would help reduce the risk of epidemics and outbreaks of diseases. I hope maybe you'll check out Her Quiet Revolution. Um, it's again by Shadow, Shadow Mountain Publishing and it just came out in March 2020. Thank you so much for listening and be well.